everyone. Good morning. Hi, it is good to be here with you today. This is Christ the King Sunday, the last of the lectionary year. Uh, next week we move into Advent. It seems so nice outside, it's almost hard to believe that uh, we're moving into Advent already, even though I've been preparing for it since July. Uh, you know, I've been waiting and waiting for the season of waiting, and, and here it is. Uh, last night, down at the Embrace Center, we had the, the center open for the Santa Claus Parade that went through Fort Erie, and it was just a blessing. We gave out, oh my dear, uh, I had eight bottles, seven to 14 liters of apple cider, and about uh, 400 candy canes. But, we had some really good conversations and, and enjoyed getting out and, and being with the community. And a few apples. And a few apples. We also gave out, you know, most of a bag of apples. Just a, a few things I want to bring your attention to this morning. Um, we are moving, of course, into Advent. And the Sunday School is going to be taking home these little tins. Remember when you used to have those Advent calendars and you would put a coin in every day? Well, what we have this year is a little tea can. Uh, Victoria and Bill, Reverend Bill, were very generous to drink a whole lot of tea this year, so we have many of these little tins. And they say, Advent love for your northern neighbors. And it's inviting uh, the kids, but also there's uh, many left for the adults, to put a coin in every day during Advent. It uh, doesn't matter if it's a nickel or a toonie, uh, just whatever you want to be in the practice of, of giving and thanking God for that. Now, it says our northern neighbors, because we know the few food insecurity that we, are, that we experience, many folks in our region, uh, that is also uh, an exasperated problem up for some of our, our churches in the north. And in the Gifts with Vision catalog that comes out through our denomination, uh, one of the, the places where you can give money this year is to help food security in the north. So that is the ministry or the mission that the kids are taking on during um, this Advent season. So the little tins are sitting right here on the front pew. Also, uh, as we get ready for, for next Sunday and the beginning of Advent, we are finally getting to the days of our angel walk our display. Our church is going to be open on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday early, um, 1 to 3 and 6 to 8, but on Saturday only 1 to 3. And we are asking, excuse me, <clears throat> as well my cough drop. <clears throat> So folks will be invited to come into the sanctuary and the sanctuary will be decorated with, uh, with angel displays that folks from the community have shared and brought in for, for those few days. And then you'll be invited to go through to the hall where the UCW ladies have a marketplace and then out through the art gallery which will uh, feature some photographs from our spirituality of photography group as well as some art pieces from our um, Creative Spirits Group. So uh, we also have lots of little postcards to give away, so take some and share them with your friends. Uh, after, after worship this morning, we have a membership class for folks who are interested in learning more about becoming a member of our church. <clears throat> we have a few people who are signed up. If, uh, if you didn't get signed up but wanted to go, please let us know immediately after church, and then these members will be received into the whole body next Sunday. I believe that is all of my announcements, and I would ask Rick to come forward and share an announcement. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rick Gorham, and I'm the chairman of the Council of St. John Stevensville United Church. At the church council meeting held last Tuesday, November 16th, one of the new business items discussed at length was the recent Ontario government policy statement of a plan to safely reopen Ontario and manage COVID-19 for the longer term. As part of the statement, 
effective October 25th, 2021, was the lifting of capacity limits and physical distancing requirements for various types of settings, including church meetings, services, rites and ceremonies, subject to proof of identification and full vaccination against COVID-19. At the Tuesday meeting, the church council unanimously agreed that we would implement effective with the next week's meetings and church services, a policy of requiring both proof of identification and full vaccination in order to attend. The effect of this policy is that more people will be able to participate subject to the requirements where masking will continue to be required, but social distancing will not. We will continue in the short term to keep partitioning in place in the congregation that we have now and require attendees to remain seated while hymns are sung. Minor changes may be noticed to the removal of partitioning in the choir loft as well as the portable partitions in front of both the pulpit and the lectern. All of this will be monitored on an ongoing basis as we experience any further requirements due to COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And just uh, for a little uh, background, Right now, the, the size of our, our sanctuary is very small, of course, and we are limited to using 50% of our sanctuary. Uh, but with the, the decision to uh, require proof of vaccination, we are able to use 100% of our sanctuary. Uh, and that means not having to turn anyone away who comes to visit over the Christmas season. So folks, let us call one another to worship as you'll see on your screen. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from the one who is and who was and who is to come. Grace to you and the peace of Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and bearer of truth. Lift your voices in praise and thanksgiving, for the end is no longer the end, but the beginning. God is the Alpha and Omega, our Lord, our God, the one who is and who was and who is to come. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, on this uh, Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday, let's begin by singing hymn number 211, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please join me in prayer. You are the source of all things. You are the beginning and the end. You are the great I am. And we are blessed in knowing you, God of all things. We ask for your help. help. We ask for your wisdom. Guidance. We ask for your compassion. Love us. So that we might be compassionate and wise as we help in your world. May it be this way by your loving grace. Loving love. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the children to come up uh, to the front pews there, and uh, Reverend Bill's got something he wants to tell you. King, y'all, you can always tell the king when the king's in the room because he's the one wearing a crown. And he's also the one who's usually telling people what to do. He says, Michaela, go over there. And Michaela has to go over there. And he says, bring me my wine. And someone brings him some wine. And he gets all the food he wants and he gets, he gets everything that he wants. So, do you think that that's the kind of king that Jesus is? I see some heads shaking. And you're right, it's not the kind of king Jesus is. Jesus says that if you're going to be the king, then it's not about getting everything you want, but it's about taking care of all of the people who live in the land that you're the king of. And so Jesus says, if you're the king, then before you eat, everybody else should eat. And before you get a really comfy bed to sleep in, everybody else should have a comfy bed to sleep in. And before you get the big gigantic castle and all the servants and the people with swords and stuff out front, everybody should have a, have a roof over their head and a house to live in. And that is what we come here to church to think about and to talk about and to remember. Because when we're coming into Christmas and we remember that Jesus was born, a little baby just like all of us, and then Jesus was born poor, but he became known as the King of Israel. And so... We remember that, and then we try to live just like Jesus lived and taught us to live. And we come to church and go to Sunday school in order to learn those things. So now you get to go to Sunday school to talk about some of the things that Jesus taught and some of the things that we need to learn. So. Off we go. Stand up on that.
as we prepare for this morning's readings, we are going to do so by singing first. And so we're going to sing number 356 from Voices United, Seek Ye First. <laughs> This morning, we start our scripture readings with a passage from the Passion story found in the Gospel of John. Here, Pilate mocks Jesus as King of the Jews, a reading taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. Pilate then went back into the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? Is that your idea, Jesus asked? Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. So Pilate said, You are a king then. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Our second passage follows up on the theme of Jesus as king, but from a much wider perspective. So hear now the words from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. For look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hear now what, church, what God is saying to the church through these scriptures today. Thank you. 
amazing. Thank you for that. Friends, please pray with me. <coughs> Loving God, we pray that you focus our hearts this morning. Remind us that we are not above nor below our common story, but a part of the story of your love for this world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In my, um, my own personal devotions these days, I have been reading through the Psalms. <clears throat> and I less read through than I skip around, right? And this week I read Psalm 150, which is the final benediction of the whole collection of Psalms. Actually, the last five of the Psalms of the book focus on exuberant praise. It calls for, for praise in all of creation, by all of creation, and it calls for, for a praise that really just, just lets loose with over-the-top kind of joy and celebration. And we are told in those psalms that the reason we are encouraged to, to participate in such an exuberant praise uh, is because of God's exceeding greatness. God's exceeding greatness, which is beyond what, what mortals like us can fully imagine. God's mighty might, God's great greatness, God's loving loveness, generous generosity, and, and in the litany that I read uh, in one of my little books that went with my psalms, they use a descriptive of God's very muchness. And I love that description. I don't even fully know what it means, but, but thinking of God's very muchness uh, it just kind of speaks to that. Something we, we just know in our hearts, but can't quite, can't quite grasp. Psalms of praise in general give us this sense of God being the God of the whole cosmos. And I believe that it is really through, through that kind of lens of, of just exceeding muchness, of, of great greatness, that, that we need to think about the kingdom of God. A kingdom that is, is so vastly beyond our comprehension that the word kingdom itself doesn't quite, doesn't quite encapsulate it. And when we talk about Christ the King, because today, of course, as we mentioned, is Christ the King Sunday. It kind of even shows our limited human comprehension of the triune God. That we need to find words that, that kind of say what, what we want to say, but, but God is just so much beyond our speech. And in the history of the church, we often do uphold the image of Christ as, as that of a conquering king. When in reality, everything is already Christ. Was, is, and always will be. So we would be wise not to, not to confuse our, our particular religious understandings with the actual kingdom of God. Now, let me be clear, because, you know, let me unpack what I said for a second. Because I believe it is very important to have a particular religious understanding. Sometimes we call them denominations. And within each denomination, we have uh, communities of faith, or we have congregations, and, and we need to find the one in which we are nurtured and we are, are uh, led to be closer to God. It's essential 
to our spiritual growth, to, to have a community to support us in our faith journey, to remind us that, that we also have a responsibility to care for one another within that community. But, but, we are not the definers of God's grace and mercy. God doesn't belong to us, we belong to God. And one of our readings this morning came from the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, which, which is a strange book, eh? It records a, a vision by John, presumably the apostle, this vision by John while in exile on, on the island of Patmos. Now, unpacking the, the whole vision that uh, is recorded in the book uh, would take much longer than we have this morning. So for, for our purposes of this morning, I'm going to say that let's just, set apart, pra, blah, let's just set aside the more wilder parts of, of his vision, like the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and concentrate on that salutation that begins this particular piece of writing. The salutation or the introduction that uh, Reverend Bill read sets the lens through which the vision is supposed to be read and understood. And when we do that, we find that John's vision offers to us a hope-filled message. The opening text itself offers a, a rich and beautiful Trinitarian weaving of, of Christological, ecclesiological, and, and ethical understandings of a God in, of hope in a God who was and is and ever will be, who is to come. And I think for us, that is just great, amazing news in 2021. And if it's such great news for us in, in 2021, just imagine, imagine how hope-filled it sounded to those first century Christians who were suffering under Roman persecution. Historical theologians place the, the writings of Revelation as after the rule of Nero and during the time of Emperor Domitian. Um, this was not a fun time to be a Christian. It was an extremely, extremely dangerous time to be a Christian. The Roman Empire was determined to stamp out Christianity in the most brutal and violent ways that they could think of. And the first century church, the Christians that made up that first century church, they needed a vision. They needed a vision of hope. <clears throat> and God, God gives the exiled John this somewhat wild dream or vision with layers upon layers of symbolism to, to inspire the church to hold together. Because the brutal and the violent empire of the day would not have the last word. In his very subversive opening greeting, <coughs> excuse me, in his subversive opening greeting, John declares that though it may look otherwise, the Christian community is the kingdom, and Jesus Christ is the king, is and was and always would be. <coughs> Sorry. Have confidence. John encourages that there is a new world that is constantly unfolding. And putting it in, in the terms that the folks of the time could, could understand or imagine. He talks about a new kingdom, same as Jesus did, a new Jerusalem, a new commonwealth, a new order that is heavenly directed and not earthly dominated. 
And John's vision comes with a reminder and the assurance that faithfulness in the now is an important part of that building of the unfolding reality. John says not to worry if the present uh, circumstances in which we live suggest that someone other than God is in control because in the long run, the church will prevail. And the reasoning why, why John is, says all this and he's so confident in this comes from verse five. Because God already rules over the powers of sin and death in the world due to the redemptive work of Jesus Christ through Jesus' death and resurrection. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, all of humanity has been liberta liberated for all time. It is an inclusive salvation for everyone, for all time. And that is why John can, can hold up that the present day empires can do nothing more than break our bodies. Our other reading for this morning from the Gospel of John describes that kind of back and forth conversation between Pilate and Jesus immediately before his exe execution. And Pilate calls Jesus the King of the Jews. And he does it because he thinks it's funny. He's being contemptuous of, of Jesus and also of the whole Jewish nation and he calls him the King of the Jews. Except Pilate doesn't realize just how true his words are. Jesus is indeed the king of the Jews to fulfill the, the, the idea of salvation coming through the house of David. And even truer, because Jesus, the very incarnation of God, is the king, the creator of the cosmos. Is, always was, and always will be. And the, the muchness, the muchness of God, beyond our comprehension, if we need to think about it in terms of kingdoms and, and reigns to get our head around that very muchness, well, then so be it. Because in the end, we get to say, thanks be to God. Amen.
At this time, I would invite folks to, uh, to think about their giving as Jim brings forward our offering. Loving God, as always, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the, for the warmth in the air that is, that is carrying us through this month of November. And we thank you for the chill that we can feel at times that remind us that December is coming. We thank you for the summer that has passed the fall which we live in, the winter and the spring that holds the promise and hope of new life. Lord, we thank you that you have called us into being as your people in this time and this place where the seasons remind us of the journey through life and where the ebb and flow of the waters of the Great Lakes remind us of the ebb and flow of life. We thank you for this faith community that continues to, to try to be your presence, that tries to proclaim your word, your truth, your hope. We thank you that you have journeyed with us from last Advent until now. And we are thankful for the faith that, that we hold that reminds us that you will continue to travel with us into every tomorrow. Lord, this morning as we come into worship, we, we come in mindful of the news stories of the world. We hear once again that, that numbers are increasing that different jurisdictions are, are considering new restrictions, even as here in Ontario, we are contemplating the lifting of restrictions. We're thankful for, the, for those in leadership who, who continue to wrestle with, with this reality, and we pray that we will continue to to listen for your voice, to hear your guidance as we strive to care for the least among us. We continue to hear the stories from British Columbia, stories of, of landslides and flooding, stories of people stranded on the highways for not only hours, but days. 
these are stories that are coupled with, with others from around the world, stories of drought as well as flooding, stories of new freezing weather as well as historic highs, stories of increased hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, and we, and we pray that, that we might get a handle on the issues that are, that, are, that are bringing these to the fore. That we might become serious as not only nations, but as entire peoples. That we might become serious in our work towards climate change and climate justice. And as we consider the climate, we also know that there are peoples around the world who are forced from their homes and seeking refuge in other nations. And we pray that borders will be opened, that those who are struggling the most might find relief from those who are not quite as severely affected. And Lord, we also heard or saw in the news that, that at least one person who we regard as a billionaire has said that if it could be proved that, that a certain amount of money could be used to alleviate world hunger, that he would donate that money. And so we pray that, that those who are in positions of means will open their hearts and not need to be not to be not need to be given absolute proof but will know that they could indeed have a hand in change that they could indeed have a hand in the creation of a more just and compassionate world and we pray also for ourselves that we might have the courage to do what needs to be done here in our local communities and indeed in our homes to make our part of your creation a more just and equitable place. And finally, when we come into this space, we come bringing our own prayers, concerns, hopes, joys, anxieties before you. And so we hold those names that we carry in our hearts and on our minds. We, we hold them before you, along with the prayers for the world, confident that you hear even the silences of our hearts, that you hear our prayers, and when you hear them, you indeed answer, and we humbly offer ourselves to be the answer to the prayers we offer. And we bring all of these prayers before you using the words that Jesus offered to his disciples when they asked how they ought to pray, he responded, pray like this. <laughs>
And as we prepare for this, this morning's benediction, we uh, do so uh, by once again singing. And so we will join our voices together, singing number 213 from Voices United, Rejoice the Lord is King. So you will have noticed, in addition to our choir this morning, we were blessed to have some special musicians with us. Thank you for, thank you for being with us. We were indeed blessed. Uh, before I uh, share our benediction, I uh, just wanted to also note that, of course, as we transition um, from the year, year B, I guess, of the lectionary and into Advent, which is uh, the new year in the church. Um, our, our angel walk, we took the theme of angels from the realms of glory. So our closing benediction, uh, final sung blessing will come from that. So, so you're getting a little bit of a, a, a sneak into the Christmas Advent season as well. But before we do that, let us bless one another with our benediction. From this place, go out remembering the holy vision. Go to the waiting world. Go out to build God's dream. We go out with the spirit of Christ within us. Amen. Amen.